Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Sabin, the editor-in-chief at Projector Central, and I'm here today with Greg Lee from LG Electronics to talk about three of the company's latest home theater-related projectors. Greg, good to have you. Thanks for joining us for the Expo. Sure thing. Glad to be here. Always good talking with you. Terrific. So, so let's start out actually just talking about the HUA-10, which, of course, we reviewed uh, favorably not too long ago. Uh, just a just a terrific, I thought, groundbreaking projector. You know, under $3,000, the first really affordable, high-quality laser projector that we've seen. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about it, and then we can go through some of the features. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, this is a real exciting piece for us. Uh, it's something that, you know, LG has been building towards, and we've had our, you know, UST, and we've done a lot of LEDs, but to have a real home theater focused, you know, uh, nice size projector that has all of the major features I think customers are looking for. Uh, number one, of course, laser illumination. Uh, we expect it to last up to you know, 20,000 hours. Gets really bright. Uh, I've, I've been playing with one here at the house and it's amazingly bright, upwards of you know 2,700 ANSI lumens. So that'll, of course, will allow you to drive something really big. I think I pushed it out to almost 180 inches and it was still significantly bright enough. So if you're wanting to go large, I think it's a really good option for that. Uh, and because it's laser, you know, all the great options or the capabilities where it's all pretty much instant turn on, you're up and running in just, you know, a handful of seconds, more or less, maybe 12. And when you shut it off, there's not that long cool down period. Uh, but because we're going to use this a lot for movies, they put a lot of emphasis on, you know, not only brightness, but color capability. And because we're using a dual laser system. Uh, we are seeing, you know, DCI P3 coverage of around 97%, which starting to make a lot more sense nowadays, now that more customers are accessing programming through Disney, you know, Netflix, uh, Vudu, Amazon Prime, Apple TV that have HDR capabilities. And that wider color space of DCI P3 is becoming more readily available so, you know, one of the things that I, uh, um, one of the things that, that I, I, I was really impressed about with this projector was the, the, H, the dynamic HDR capabilities, which uh, above and beyond just having that great wide dynamic range uh, really sort of takes, the, takes the, the, the pain out of watching HDR with different types of programs. So. Right. So, you know, that circuit, um, the auto dynamic HDR tone mapping really does a great job of, you know, looking at the signal that's coming in and then looking at what the capabilities of the projector are and making sure that you always have, you know, that good solid image range within the capabilities of the projector. So, you know, bright scenes aren't pushed to be too dark, which sometimes we've seen with HDR programming. And, you know, dark scenes sometimes aren't, don't sure. seem to show all the, you know, the details. So it does a real good job of making sure those highlights that sometimes just get blown out, you know, in, in projection are mapped into the displayable range of the unit. And yeah, it's a lot more convenient because instead of having a manual iris or a manual control to set it for HDR, uh, it's like you'll set it for bright scenes like, oh, looks great. And then you go to a dark scene, it's like, oh, now it's too flat. Now you have to go back and set it again and you're constantly going in trying to get the most out of it. Whereas this circuit just takes all that into consideration and just makes it look you know, really good and you don't have to sit there and constantly make that manual adjustment. Sure, sure. Um, you know, one of the other things that I noticed about it as well, and you mentioned the 2700 lumens, you know, the fact is that this projector does have the ability when you want to, to adjust it either for that high ambient light situation or those dark room situations. Um, and, and that's a consequence, I guess, of the, the iris uh, mode that's in there, right? Yes, uh, which, you know, I was playing with this week and, you know, I love, everybody loves a projector that's really bright, but you really want that balance between, you know, really bright with bright highlights and a good solid, you know, black level. And, you know, running it in the, there's three modes, um, or actually the Iris has 10 settings or there's three like presets you can choose from. I was adjusting it manually. And if it was on the maximum setting, it was really bright. And if I had, you know, the windows open or some lighting in the room, that extra brightness really helped to offset, uh, you know, in the projector to offset the illumination in the room. 
But when blinds were closed, lights were down, I found that it was almost too bright. And by adjusting the iris down to about six, maybe seven out on a, on a scale to 10, really brought the balance back, giving you a you know more stable and a darker black, but still with enough brightness that you didn't feel like you were losing out on, you know, you got that good contrast range. So that's definitely helpful. And to further enhance that, we now have the adaptive contrast, where on a lot of your projectors, you've got that, you know, iris control for uh, that modulates light coming, you know, out of the projector to make dark scenes darker and bright scenes brighter. Uh, adaptive, you know, contrast for us actually raises the power and lowers the power of the laser light illumination engine. So instead of right. using a mechanical system, we're actually changing the drive. So it's a couple of ways you can really match, you know, what you're trying to accomplish in your theater room or wherever you're showing this with, you know, the lighting conditions and whatnot. Uh, for me, I found that setting it at uh, six on the iris and then either medium or high on the adaptive contrast was really the best, kind of the sweet spot for getting the best overall image. Sure, sure. And, and, and you know, one of the other things about the, the, uh, the, the light engine is that I also noticed another great benefit. Uh, you know, I, I looked at that projector for many hours. I'm not sure I ever really saw anything that could really constitute a rainbow artifact. It was extremely rare occurrence, if at all. And uh, yeah, you know, I've been watching it for several days uh, here and I, like you, have not seen, you know, the appearance. Now, I'm sure if I really force myself to put up maybe, you know, uh, let's say the in credits, you know, white, you know, letters on a dark black background and then shook my head hard back and forth. Exactly. In my you eyes. get some challenging material like that, but yeah, uh, maybe, but yeah, and, and you're, you're, I think you're exactly right. I just have not seen it, the image breakup uh, like we've experienced in years past with, you know, wheel based, you know, right. uh, DLP lighting systems. Yeah. And it's, it's a dual laser system, right? So there's a red laser as well as a blue laser. Correct. That's and, how you get uh, your right we, gamut. Yeah, we found the bookends, you know, the deep red and the, the right blue, uh, so we can cover that entire range of color in between. Gotcha. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the, uh, some of the sort of utility and streaming features on there, because uh, it's, it's obviously got the, the onboard web OS, which is another terrific thing to have in a projector these days. Um, uh, you've been including that on all the projectors uh, for the last uh, year or so, right? Yeah, actually, we've had WebOS running back. Um, I started with the company in 2016, and even back then, we had projectors that had versions of it. So we've been utilizing it, which has allowed us to kind of refine it and tweak it. Uh, but yeah, the 810 is using the uh, WebOS 5.0, and this one you know allows you to access and stream content directly you know through the unit, like you know Disney Plus. Um, was the YouTube, you know, a lot of your favorites are there. And um, with the 810, it also has the thin Q capabilities. So not only is it, you know, a projector that gets access to your favorite streaming services, you can press the mic button and ask the projector to change picture mode, set a sleep timer, change the volume, uh, launch, you know, uh, Disney Plus. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with voice. And if you're already using either Google Assistant or Google controlled products in your home or Amazon Alexa controlled products in your home, you can talk to the projector and it will actually control the products in your home. So it's more or less like our televisions, but in a projector form factor in terms yeah, of its capabilities. Sure. That's a very that's actually a really nice feature and, and one that I, I don't know that I went into much detail in in the review. It's I think it's often overlooked because, uh, you know, we look at things as a display product, but it really is a smart home hub as well, isn't it? So, yeah, I, and I think that's one of the things that really sets the LG projectors apart from just about every other projector out there. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that you're getting the full, you know, smart TV experience like you would with our you know, OLEDs and NanoCell and new QNED mini LED products, but in that, you know, theater projector form factor, which is very unique. Gotcha. 
So I, I think one more thing that's probably worth mentioning about this particular projector before we move on is the is the HDMI 2.1 eARC uh, connection, because that is not something that we've actually seen prior till now in a projector. Everybody's waiting, of course, for for full bandwidth, uh, you know, HDMI 2.1 <laughs> for the gaming and all of that capability. But, um, uh, you know, it's nice to see 2.1 showing up on a projector in any event. What um, and, and of course, the eARC has some special capabilities, right? Right. Um, the, you know, the fact that, you know, I think this is one of, if not the first projectors with HDMI 2.1 capabilities. And uh, we're supporting up to 24 gigabit per second. So you can run, you know, uh, 4K, 444. Um, trying to think. Yeah. 10 bit, 12 bit, 10 12, bit through uh, it. I think, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you can go with a really high grade signal if you're doing any kind of content creation. You want to see that capability on a large screen before you start, you know, chopping it down <laughs> to four two two four two zero. But the you know nice thing is that you're getting that bandwidth, which means better performance specification capability, and the fact that it does have eARC. Um, I've got it set up in my theater right now, but I've got my Blu-ray player sitting by the projector. And to run into, you know, the projector, but then I'm using the eARC out to a receiver. That way I just, I don't have to worry about getting signal loss or sure. uh, quality loss. I'm getting full bandwidth, you know, Dolby Atmos, uh, you know, master level DTS quality sound. And I really didn't have to do anything special other than make sure the receiver and the you know, projector and the component all support those higher capabilities. But yeah, it's, it's a convenience thing. So I could you know, be connected to the projector and anything that's coming through it, you're getting the highest quality audio signal that it can provide uh, all the way up to you know, uncompressed uh, on multi-channels. So yeah, it's, it's marching on. So it's good to see that LG is really taking the forefront and adding those higher level you know, features in terms of performance, whether it's video or audio uh, in our products. So customers can definitely take advantage and benefit from them. Yeah, and, and absolutely. And, and to your point, you know, the, the you mentioned the Dolby Atmos connection, which is really something that's uh, not quite, but pretty much exclusive to the eARC connection. So so having that upgrade is a beautiful thing. You can take a, a Sonos Arc soundbar and, and connect it up to that and get your full Atmos output uh, which you really can't do with, uh, for example, with that product, you you can't just do that with a regular ARC connection. You really need the more modern eARC connection. So uh, it's good to have that on there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the HU85LA. Um, different kind of product, still kind of designed for the living room, but uh, a totally different approach. Yeah, you know, is the industry has gotten to higher resolution and we're seeing larger screen sizes, everybody wants bigger and better. And, you know, if you have a TV cabinet that can support maybe a 55 or a 55 inch TV, but you've got plenty of wall space behind it. I think the beauty of UST is without having to do a lot of, you know, running wires, a lot of installation, you can pretty much set that product on your TV stand in the place of your 55 inch TV and our you know, HU85LA is a 90 to 120 inch recommended range image. So you can really jump things up very easily by just taking the old down and putting the new UST HU85 projector in its place. Yeah, uh, obviously the ease of setup is, is really the big attraction these days with these new UST projectors. This one within that product class falls, uh, certainly falls at the high end. Um, and uh, it, it's very well built and has a lot of beautiful features. I know 2,700 lumens, right? 20,000 hour right. Light, light engine with that projector? Correct. Uh, and then the same coverage of DCI P3, you know, up to its full illumination. So, mm -hmm. and instead of the dual laser of the 810, we are using, you know, three channel laser, one red, right. one blue, and then a, that second blue that goes through the, uh, uh, phosphor panel to give us the green in between. So uh, an even richer color palette and, you know, capability out of that one. Sure. And uh, of course, the 0 0.66 inch larger DLP chip as well, which you really only do see in premium projectors. 
Right. So it has the higher uh, DMD uh, micromirror count on it. Uh, it's essentially 4.15 megapixel. And then using, of course, uh, TI's XPR technology to get the full 8.3, you know, there are about a million pixels on screen. Right. And uh, of course, also WebOS on this product as well. Correct. <laughs> so keep it with that because, you know, if you're replacing the TV, yeah. you, know, you grab the remote, it's got front firing speakers, uh, you know, about 10 watts of audio. It could easily be a TV replacement with just a giant screen right there in your living room. And you don't have to necessarily have an installer come and set it up, but it will certainly, uh, you know, make a big image in your living room. But with UST, one thing I do recommend is you've got to be real precise with the setup on those because the way that they're such a short angle, you've got to be very precise at getting that thing centered. You know, can't be, you know, it's got to be level. Everything's got to be plumb, perpendicular and parallel to, to make it give you the perfect geometry. Right. It's definitely definitely a challenge uh, on the first time setup for those products. But once it's done, it, it's done and you get that big, beautiful image without having to run wires to the back of the room, which is is a sweet thing. Uh, I know that this projector also has some nice capabilities as far as hooking up an external sound system if you want to. You've got HDMI with ARC on it. You've got an optical output. And there's also Bluetooth out on that uh, projector as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And it's actually pretty consistent among you know LG projectors. Uh, you know, all of our 4Ks support all of those things, including Bluetooth. So we know of cases where people wanted an outdoor projector and they could literally grab the 85, take it out, get it set up. You know, it connects via Wi-Fi and then they've got a Bluetooth audio system. So you very quickly can go to a portable outdoor movie theater or entertainment area. Right. And then if it starts to get cloudy, you grab it and you run it inside and, you know, turn off the Bluetooth and, you know, back into your theater it goes. So it gives you some flexibility and some ease of use, definitely. Right. And, and this projector as well, we should mention just from an image quality standpoint, uh, also features dynamic HDR. Yes. So again, when you're watching HDR content, you know, projectors aren't as bright as the flat panels out there, especially when you're driving them as large. So making sure that you get, you know, that good brightness, but that those highlights and those bright details aren't basically, you know, being blown out or turned just white that they're mapped into the viewable capabilities of the projector. So it'll give scenes a richer, you know, more dynamic look without losing details in those bright areas. Okay, great. So why don't we talk a little bit then finally about the HU70 LA, which is a, uh, that's kind of a, kind of a different sort of product, you know, much lower priced. Uh, I think these days it's, uh, it's selling for about uh, 15 or $1,600, right? Uh, right. And, you're right in the range. Uh, right. And, uh, uh, just kind of a, a more interesting, more portable uh, LED-based product, right? Right. It is a smaller form factor on this. And instead of laser, we are using LEDs, which, again, we love using things that are bright and long life. Uh, but this one's a four-channel LED with a red, green, uh, blue, and a second uh, green, uh, again, to help uh, improve color capability on the unit. And uh, But... It has all the signature things, you know, from LG in terms of performance and capability. Uh, you know, it's very connectable. It has Bluetooth. It has, you know, ARC. It has, you know, HDMI. It has Wi-Fi. Uh, it has the built-in WebOS. So you get, you know, all mm -hmm. the smart capabilities. It has the voice control capabilities. So it's got all those great things. But as you said, it's not going to be as bright, uh, about 1,500 lumens, about half the brightness. And it is smaller. But it is one of those that if maybe you wanted to do, you know, small theater in your home, uh, it's very unobtrusive. It, you know, mounts up on the ceiling. You can do it desktop. And then if you wanted to, again, take it outside, because it has WebOS built in, you can connect to, you know, Wi-Fi in the house, might be able to pull up YouTube TV and watch, you know, Grand Prix, you know, football, baseball, whatever outside and just use the Bluetooth connect to a Bluetooth audio system or soundbar while you're out there. And when you need to take it in, it's very quickly move it inside and back into the theater it goes. So yeah, it's a really cool little piece, um, you know, a little bit more uh, portable, but other than that, very capable in its ability to show, you know, 4K 
HDR, uh, and even it has the dynamic tone mapping with it as well. <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, and, and uh, I, we should also mention that that projector, like the HU85 LA, has a built-in TV tuner. So should you want to hook up an antenna to it, and that's kind of an unusual feature to see, especially in a fairly low cost, you know, projector like that. So. Yeah, exactly. We don't see too many ATSC tuners and projectors, but yes, the HU85 and the HU70 both have those built in. Okay, great. Well, look, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you want to say regarding just LG? You know, you guys have kind of been on the move for the last uh, couple of years in terms of developing some fairly impressive new products. Uh, obviously, uh, you've been in the portables category for a long time and uh, had a lot of smaller lifestyle projectors out in the past, but uh, it just sort of seems like uh, the company's uh, really putting some effort into developing some interesting new products. Is there anything new coming down the pike that you can tease us on, or is there anything you just want to say about the philosophy uh, for the company and how it treats this particular category? Yeah, well, I'll, you know, I wish I could give you information about future product, but uh, not able to do that at this point. Yeah, but, you know, LG, unusual. yeah, is LG, you know, as you pointed out, um, you know, we're doing more of the portables, but LG is really focusing on this as a category and they're very excited, you know, about the introduction and the reception of the HU85 and the 810 uh, reviews that we, like at Projector Central, have been really good. And, you know, they're really taking this category seriously and they're wanting to know what, you know, customers want to do with these products, not just in their current form, but, you know, what do we see happening in the future? So we're looking at that as a possible, you know, as to what are the possibilities that we can do with projection moving forward in the consumer realm. But LG has put a lot of effort into these. Uh, you know, if we look at the A10, uh, they're using, you know, the latest technology in laser. We're making this a complete, you know, fully integrated product with smart capabilities. And they're really set up that just about anything you want to do, you know, in terms of home theater and whatnot, they can very easily support. Uh, we even have our uh, a special model in our CI group, uh, the AU810, which even has even more features, including, you know, auto ca calibration with um, right. uh, Calman and portrait displays. Uh, it's a it's the black case if you want that instead of the white, and it also has WISA capability, so fully wireless audio capability. You buy the dongle and a WISA 5.1 surround sound system. You, all you have to do is plug things in. You don't have to run speaker wires. So uh, doing some really cool, unique things. If you look at sort of LG's philosophy, we want to give you as much as we possibly can. All the things that you may or may even not use, but they're available in the projector. And if you compare to our biggest competitors, you're going to get a fraction of the features and options, uh, you know, that we're offering in terms of connectability, smart, and, you know, streaming capabilities, sure. which most projectors just don't have that. So seem to be really focusing on, you know, what consumers like in their TVs and trying to fully integrate it into our projector yeah. products. And, and I think that is one of the things that makes LG so special as a projector manufacturer. You've got this long, rich history in the, you know, in the, in the television business, and you've developed those panels out uh, to become such sophisticated products. So to see things like AutoCal migrating over and the WISA connection, uh, as well as uh, just the way, honestly, the, the depth of engineering uh, that's being applied to just managing something like a laser light engine and modulating the light and figuring out how to get the best images out of it. You know, there's obviously a, a lot of resources behind these, these products. Yeah, definitely. And I'm excited to see what their next product is, but man, that 810 for, you know, the price point that it's at, I think uh, Projector Central has it as like an editor's choice. Is that yes, right? We did. We did. And that is, by the way, that's not something that we we give out too easily. You know, we really have to be uh, really have to be wowed and feel like a company really hit it out of the park. And that means uh, essentially no flaws or at least no fatal flaws, but more critically, something that just so clearly rises uh, above the competition and provides either just tremendous uh, performance or tremendous value. This projector does a great job of, of hitting both those those hot points. So uh, it's a well-deserved uh, honor. Okay. We appreciate it.
Thank you. Oh, well, thank you for being here. And, and of course, thanks to you and LG for participating in the expo. We will uh, we'll look forward to, to seeing uh, the next thing that comes out of uh, LG's uh, factory. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for having us at this great event. Thanks a lot. Take care, Greg. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.